All right, Natalie, let's talk a little bit about late season fall garden problems, <laughs> all right? So what do you want to start off with? Well, we know we've been through the summer season, right? And we've dealt with some of the early blight and the common things that we see sometimes on our tomato plants and things like that. But I wanted to just talk about some things that maybe aren't as much okay. on right. our radar. Um, and basil downy mildew is one of the one of the first ones. This ha actually is a disease that we've been dealing with for less than 10 years right. here in the United States. Um, and it's something that can certainly take down our late summer to fall herbs mm -hmm. uh, pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, uh, what, what do the symptoms look like, though? I mean, how do you know that you have... Well, one of the confusing the things about basil downy mildew is when we first see it on our plants, we may actually mistake it for a nutritional issue. Mm -hmm. uh, so, of course, we're typically going to be looking at the top of our sure. plants and the sure. top of the leaves, and where <laughs> we'll see it first will be a little bit of yellowing between the veins on the top of the okay. leaves. We may look at that and think, oh, low iron or low nitrogen, right? right? right. We may think fertility. But what we we'll want to make sure we do is flip over that leaf and look on the underneath side because lots of times then we'll see that sporulation, you know, that sign of the um, fungal-like organism that, uh, that causes this disease. And over time, it'll cause a lot worse damage um, on, our, on our basil leaves. Okay, so where does it come from? <laughs> well, it can be seed-borne, mm -hmm. and it's challenging con to control in, in basil. That Some seeds are treated, but that can be a potential entry source. Lots of times it's airborne, right. uh, sure. and you know it overwinters in very warm places. But as the season progresses, it moves uh, further up. Mm -hmm. And so if your if your neighbor has downy mildew on their basil, it won't be very long before it before it. it gets to yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So what are the most susceptible cultivars? Well, this is one of the challenging things about it because right, we all <laughs> like uh, Genovese basil, some of the sweet mm -hmm. basils for our pesto, and you know, to eat with our tomatoes and mozzarella cheese, and those are actually some of the most susceptible cultivars. Okay. And so um, there are, if we use a, a red basil or a cinnamon, Thai, a lot of those types of cultivars are actually less susceptible than okay. our sweet basil. Now we're making some good progress. Um, there are some. Sweet basil's Eleonora is one that has a little <laughs> bit more resistance uh, to basil downy mildew than some of our um, some of our other mm -hmm. older cultivars. Um, not bulletproof, not complete, but but will stand up a little bit stronger uh, to disease. So so we can purposefully choose another cultivar. We can watch our plants closely. Um, you know, high humidity, of yeah. course. You know, we want good air movement. Sure. Um, and and watch them watch them closely. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So treatments. Mm -hmm. You know, outside of what you just mentioned, if we do yeah. some of those things, but yes. any other treatments? So, of course, environmental is some of the best ways to deal with it. If we can, uh, of course, saying maintain low humidity nah, in the late summer that. is a hard thing yeah, to do. Yeah, it's going to be hard. <laughs> um, but uh, good air movement, you know, not letting our plants get so dense with <laughs> leaves. Um, so keep them harvested, keep them, watch, watch them closely. And if you have a few infected leaves, pull those off mm -hmm. quickly. And... Uh, and try to you know maintain as much uh, sanitation as possible. Keep those um, clean. There are some um, some biological sprays like Actinovate, things like that, mm -hmm. that are you know organically certifiable that we can use as a protectant. Okay. You know, as home as homeowners, there aren't um, fungicides that work real well for control. But when we have high humidity um, temperatures and things that are you know very ripe for infection, then mm -hmm. some of the protectants can can be a good step. Okay, yeah, always practice good sanitation though. So yeah. I tell folks, get those infected leaves out of there. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move to army worms, right? <laughs> yeah. That, that's a problem? Okay. Yeah, so I'm sure that people are probably pretty familiar with fall yeah, army fall, worms. Yeah, right. um, One of the issues that I've had in actually has been my tomato uh, plots and trials this summer have actually been yellow striped army worms. So they're mm -hmm. very, so they're mm -hmm. very close, um, but, uh, but you know, can be foliage mm -hmm. feeders. Uh, but I've actually had um, a lot of uh, issues with them feeding on the fruit. How about that? Okay. And, and as you know, you can guess, certainly they'll damage the fruit, but after they feed for, for a little while, then you get um, other you know, disease mm -hmm. and, and degradation that can really, really destroy those fruits. We want to catch them early. Mm -hmm. Sure. So what does that damage look like? Well, it'll actually, um, on the fruit, it'll right, kind of look fruit. like a little circular entry hole. So they'll okay. be feeding on there. And in very advanced stages, I've actually, um, you know, found them completing the rest of their life cycle to get back to moths, right? So they're right. going to be small moths wow. um, inside inside that tomato fruit. So okay. sanitation can be good, right? Sanitation, if we, that's right. If we um, find fruit that we know that they are feeding on and potentially occupying, we want to get that <laughs> out of there so they don't 
you know, become moths in multiple generations, right? So the more we can right. um, control what's currently infecting our plants, the more we can um, stop it. So, Mr. D is going to like this. So, <laughs> is that fruit still edible? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you catch it early, yeah. I guess what do we say? There might be some extra protein. Yeah, protein. Dude, that's usually what he's yeah. saying, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Some extra protein. Yeah, <laughs> sometimes there'll be a little surface feeding that you can work yeah. around, but if they're very far tunneling in there, lots of times you'll get some some decay okay. in there. Okay. Yeah, so I've sprayed um, with BT products, BT, sure. right? So a zero day pre-harvest interval, you know, you can spray that. Yeah. Easy to get a hold of. Thuricide, Dipel yeah. would be a couple of brand names. Some of the Spinosad uh, products, okay. and certainly, you know, conventional insecticides because they may have a, a longer window before, before you can eat. Okay, good deal. Now let's get to these squash bugs. You know, <laughs> this is a problem. You know, we get the question all the time in the office about squash bugs. Your yeah. experience. Well, and I think with squash bugs, lots of times we get to the latter part of the season. I, I mean, I've had them on my, my winter squash. Mm. Um, pumpkins tend to be the cucurbits that they like the best, and we have lots of large adult populations. And by the time we've gotten here, our chances for control are harder, right? Yeah. It's much harder to control Definitely. the adults. So what we really want to be doing is being aware, knowing, okay. what, the, uh, knowing what the eggs look like, you know, mm -hmm. looking on the underside of our leaves and being prepared uh, for those infestations mm -hmm. uh, before they occur. Some people will put boards out in their garden, you know, they like cover and yeah. they can then squish them in the morning. So it's a, <laughs> I mean, that's a right. good way to start yeah. your day, right? right. 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 Yeah. Kill some squash yeah. bugs yeah. and head off to work. Um, All right. So early control, knowing, right. um, knowing what, you, what you have and treating those um, with, and much of this might be a regular insecticide. Uh, spray because okay. by the time our vines start to die down and there's not as much for them to feed on they're much more likely to start feeding on our fruit damaging yeah. them and reducing their their storage life so okay. we want to watch out for the little ones before the uh, before the adults get much harder to control and I'll tell you what those eggs look just like little bronze footballs yes yeah you just, and you, uh, once you learn what you're looking for yeah. They're very characteristic, and and in a small garden, you know, raised bed or a container, just just squ squish yeah. or pull the pull the eggs off, and you can really reduce your populations in small gardens. Mm -hmm. I tell you, at our victory garden, uh, the ladies out there, you know, Miss Stephanie, Miss Twilight, they actually, you know, wrap tape, mm -hmm. you know, around their hand, and they, you know, of course, flip the leaf over, and they actually, <laughs> that's how they get rid of the squash bug eggs with the tape, and it actually adheres, it sticks take to the tape. Them out that way. Yeah, and yeah. they just squish them. Yeah, yeah. take. All, all of those, that whole mass with them. Yeah, yeah. so it, it works for them pretty good. It's a lot right. safer than using two bricks for the adults. <laughs> right. you teach your thumbs and yeah. Yeah. It's painful. Yeah, those things can yeah. be something else. Yep. Get them young. Those adults are hard to control. All right, now we appreciate that good information. Thank all you much. Right.